Hi, it's Ramsey Dewey over here in Shanghai, China. This time at the UFL gym in Minhong. I'm going to do a review of the InnoLife MMA Boxing Speed Trainer Punching Bag Spinning Bar. Yes, that is the full name of this device. The makers of the InnoLife Spinning Bar asked me to evaluate their product, and so I agreed because I love moving targets. I've used similar products like the Spar Bar in the past, and this one has some unique innovations. I love the speed bag. I love the double end bag. I love all kinds of moving targets because they're so good for accuracy, technique, and power. A standard heavy bag is great, but it doesn't move. And so, anytime I can find an innovative new way to work with a moving target, I'm all for it. One of the more difficult things to coach people to do is to move their head off the center line. For ages, boxing trainers have used the rope drill to teach bobbing and weaving, but the rope drill doesn't hit back like a real person does. And so often, when fighters attempt to bob and weave, especially for the first time, they freeze and they just end up getting hit in the face over and over. We're still a long way away from the robot sparring partners I've always wanted, and so we're stuck using more primitive methods, bags. And our imagination. Because of this, our ability to visualize while training is one of the most important tools we will have, regardless of the equipment that we use. Combat sports, all of them, from boxing to mixed martial arts, are the art of inflicting damage while avoiding damage. And so, it is absolutely necessary that we find training methods. That allow us to emulate this as close as possible while reducing potential injuries, and that's where something like this comes in. It's a bar with some padding on it that spins around, emulating hooks and punches, while giving you a couple of targets—one down here and one up here—that you can hit. You'll notice down here the base is padded. The product description says that's for kicking. But I'm gonna get into that in a bit because I've got some issues. See, even with a 10% power kick right there, almost nothing behind it besides a little weight, I knock the thing clean over. In order to throw a kick at the base, I've got to hold on to the thing so it doesn't fall over. This product has a base that holds about 30 liters of water at the bottom, or you can fill it with sand, which for the most part makes it pretty stable. But again, I would recommend use this for punching rather than kicking, unless you are an extremely small individual, maybe 35 kilos or less. The base also has suction cups to help it adhere to a smooth surface, although this does relatively little to stabilize the base when kicking it because it will almost always fall over. So, as a note to the manufacturers for a future product, I would recommend make the base wider, or if you already own this product. The steel mounting that goes onto the plastic fillable base does have bolts that you could screw into a solid surface for maximum stability. But enough about kicking. That is my only real complaint about this product. It is excellent for what it does for punching, for bobbing and weaving, working offense and defense at the same time, and giving you multiple targets to work with. The target up high, I found that's the one I used the most. Whereas the target down low, that bag on the spring mount, is kind of in an awkward position. I said I was done complaining, but there's a little bit more. Yeah, sorry about that. It is in an awkward position to hit.、Um, I thought at first this will be good to throw those shovel hooks when bobbing and weaving under, but again, it's an awkward position since it is about 20 centimeters. In front of the head-mounted target, and so I find it just doesn't really work so well when trying to do what I want to do. But that is reminiscent to how a fight actually is: your opponent doesn't really cooperate or put themselves in the position that you want them to be in either. So work with what you have. I've worked with similar products to the InnoLife Spinning Bar, and this one is a lot more stable. Than the other ones. I know I've complained a little bit about the base for kicking, but none of the others were meant or advertised for kicking. The 
steel rod through this is solid and it is adjustable it's telescopic so if you are super tall you can bring it up for somebody over two meters tall and you can lower it so low that a child can use it the inner life spinning bar has the distinct advantage of being able to move around it 360 degrees i'm going to throw some kicks at this thing because i know a bunch of the people who buy this thing, which is marketed toward not just boxers, but martial artists, MMA fighters, etc., are going to test that out anyway. They want to see what happens when you kick it. Now, I would recommend if you are kicking this thing, don't focus on power, focus on precision. Otherwise, you're probably going to bang up that spinning bar and do some damage to this thing. The spinning bar is pretty well lubricated, so it spins pretty well. But if you apply some WD-40, yeah, you'll get that thing going even faster. No piece of training equipment is a substitute for a sparring partner and safe sparring habits. However, as I mentioned before, if you are able to visualize a fight, if you are able to visualize the technique you want to use against a actively resisting opponent, well, that is where equipment like this can really shine. If instead of seeing a steel pole with a spinning bar and some bags attached to it, you can visualize a real-life person and how they would move against you and how you have to move accordingly, yeah, then moving bags can be an excellent training tool. Spinning bars like this are often criticized as being too predictable. You know exactly where it's coming, when it's coming, it's easy to get into the pattern. What makes this one different and viable is that it has four potential targets. Not just the bar itself, and not just the bag on top, but the bag on the bottom, and the kick pad, well as long as you hold the thing and frame against it. If you're focusing on not just one thing, but four different things, well, then the predictable becomes a lot less predictable. One other thing you might notice right away about this bar, if you have a long reach like I do, that extends farther than the bar itself, is that you don't actually have to practice bobbing and weaving to hit the targets. You can stay comfortably behind the thing and just pick it off with your long range punches. So that kind of defeats the purpose of having a spinning bar to bob and weave under. It's like fighting a significantly shorter opponent. So if that's the case, yeah, just force yourself to get a little bit closer to the thing so you can practice your head movement. One of the big pros of the Inner Life Spinning Bar is that it allows you to practice offense while working your level changes, specifically bobbing and weaving. The big con, however, is that there are no straight attacks so that you can practice slipping, which in terms of kickboxing and mixed martial arts is a much more useful and viable skill. Which is why I would recommend use a spinning bar in conjunction with a double end bag, which comes directly at you in a straight line, allowing you to practice your slipping. Remember, head movement is not just up and down, it's side to side. And head movement works in conjunction with your footwork as well. So make sure when you are bobbing and weaving, you are moving your feet under the target to create an angle so you can come back up with a hook or a straight right to your opponent's head. Let's take a closer look at the base. Notice those suction cups on the bottom right there. It's got a steel mount bolted to the plastic base. A little warning, essentially saying wear protective equipment. It's not our fault if you get hurt and this thing beans you in the head. There's the lower body bag, the telescopic base, the swinging bar, and the spring-mounted inflatable bag on the top. You hit it, it springs back. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Let's take a closer look at the base. The base is filled from the center, so you have to fill it before you assemble the whole thing. I made the mistake of assembling the whole thing before I filled this, and this is what it looked like. 
It's, it was actually surprisingly stable with no water, no sand, no weight at all in the bottom. Well, except for kicking. Without any weight, if you touch it with your foot, essentially it's falling over. But the base does hold about 30 liters of water or about 46 kilos of sand. I really do appreciate that this targeting system has four different targets, a body target, a head target, the swinging arm, and the legs, essentially. You'll notice I threw a jab at the leg at that kicking pad. Remained pretty stable for that jab, and for the boxers out there who might think, well, you can't punch the leg in boxing, that's true. But boxing is not the only combat sport. Punching the leg is perfectly legal in mixed martial arts, and it's a viable setup for takedowns and head kicks. Overall, I'm pretty happy with my experience with the InnoLife spinning bar. It's been a pretty good addition to my bag work routine, in addition to the heavy bag, the double end bag, the speed bag, and everything else that I do. It's good to mix it up a little bit, give yourself more reasons to bob and weave. So with the other bags, you have to use your imagination a little bit more with the bobbing and weaving, whereas this one gives you a physical obstacle that you actually have to bob under, or it'll bean you in the side of the head. No damaging blow, but you know, if it's going fast, it'll smack you hard enough to let you know, yeah, don't be there when it comes around. For anyone interested in purchasing one of these, the InnoLife Punching Bag Spinning Bar is available for purchase internationally on Amazon.com. Go check them out. I'll put some links in the description down below. Thanks for watching. Now get out there and train.